there we go. Thanks, guys, for joining and take it away. All right. It's very good to be here and nice to see everyone. Um, and I'm just going to share uh, our presentation here. All right. Are we good to go? Is that working good for you, Ian? Working good. All right. So my name is Taylor Danielson. I am Technology for Living's Community Coordinator. I help to coordinate our uh, various outreach programs and our peer support. And uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements, I guess, like, like we're doing right now. I think this is my third one this week already. Uh, it's going <laughs> to be a long week, but uh, we'll pull through. And I'm here with Ian, partner in crime. Take it Thanks, away, Taylor. I am the innovation strategist at Technology for Living, and I work a bit more behind the scenes uh, with uh, new technology, really making sure that we have uh, that we're maximizing the uh, the usability of the equipment that we have, and also finding out what new equipment is available and testing it out. So, uh, for those that don't know. We well, haven't seen this presentation. We're going to go through this pretty quick. Uh, these are our main programs. The first one, Provincial Respiratory Outreach Program, or PREP for short. This is our assisted ventilation program. Uh, then we have the program that Taylor and I work with primarily, and that is Technology for Independent Living, or TIL. And that's what we're going to focus on today. And then lastly is our peer support. And that's kind of the glue that connects everything together. And uh, Taylor, myself, and some others uh, really helped um, try to help out uh, sharing information and connecting with our, our members on a one-to-one -one basis to make sure that everybody's receiving the care and the, the assistance that they need. Uh, so many of our programs have little sub programs and initiatives that uh, provide different kinds of outreach and one of them which may be of interest to the people attending today is the Simon Cox student design competition. The this competition invites post secondary students from across BC to design and build innovative new uh, devices that the world has never seen before. Um, so what we do is we invite our peers and members to submit their interesting ideas for things they would uh, like to see built that would improve their independence. And we give these ideas to a student team and we let them do their thing. Um, so if you've ever got an idea for something that is going to boost your independence and lead to you, um, you know, succeeding in life, uh, please reach out to me and let me know what your idea is. and. We'll be sure to pass it along to uh, the students as they come looking for ideas. Uh, this year's event is going to be presented virtually on YouTube on May 7th at 10 a.m. And uh, we will be giving um, the link to the spinal cord injury um, team so that they can maybe email it out after um, this meeting so that uh, we'll have all of you to attend and um, see what it's all about. I, if you want me to use. Uh, so as Ian said, the program that uh, he and I work with primarily is technology for independent living. Um, though not exclusively, I, I work with uh, most of the, well, we both work with all of the programs, but uh, the technology is where our hearts are. And that's what we're here today to talk to you about. Um, TIL is member driven. Uh, and what that means is we work with you as a person to learn who you are and uh, what is important to you and what it means for you to be independent. Uh, we help you be independent uh, through this program by providing assistive technologies and home automation solutions. Um, and we provide all of these services for no cost at all. We're here to support you uh, every step of the way from beginning to end. And then uh, we'll check in on you, you know, every couple of months or maybe a year, unless you tell us to go away. Uh, just to make sure that the technology is working well for you. And, uh, you know, we recognize that sometimes disability can change um, and what works one month may not work the next month. And if that's the case, please let us know because we want to help you and find something that works better. Uh, we are currently supporting over 700 members throughout the entire province. Um, we are a provincial wide organization 
uh, which means that we support people in Vancouver and we support people way up north in BC. Doesn't matter. Uh, we are, as you can see on the logo on the right side, we have celebrated our 50th year in existence recently, which is uh, very strange to think about that, uh, T well, TIL in, in some form has been around for over 50 years now. I think we're on about 52 or 53 years this, this time, uh, which is incredible. Uh, so are you eligible? Um, the short, probably. Almost certainly, if you're here, almost certainly. Uh, our eligibility criteria is to be 19 plus. Uh, you live at home, uh, you have limited mobility, and you live in BC. That's it. It's real simple. I'm sorry, Ian, this was your slide. I've taken it from you. <laughs> I just kept going. Uh, all right, this one's for you, Ian. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Philip. Okay, so uh, it's a very, very simple process. The first one is our application form, which you can download off of our website. Uh, then we do a brief either virtual or in-person assessment, just making sure that um, we're answering all of your questions and, and to see what equipment would work best for you. Uh, after that, Installation, so uh, we can either send you all of the equipment and then help you virtually to set it up. Or if you prefer, we can have somebody, one of our technicians or biomeds come to your home and, uh, and help with the installation and the training process. And then finally, as uh, Taylor mentioned, the follow-up is important because we really don't want this equipment to just be sitting there and not being used. Uh, it's important to us that uh, you're living independently as best as you can and that we're able to help and, and the equipment is working for you. And if it isn't, well then we'll go back to step two and do another assessment and see how we can help. Cool. Just a quick uh, so question. We're... Sorry guys yep. to interrupt. Marnie had a quick question if there oh, yeah. An Alberta chapter. There is not. Um, Ian, are you aware of any similar organizations in Alberta? I think we're pretty unique. We are very unique. Unfortunately, I don't know of anything similar to this in Alberta. Um, but if you do have any questions, something simple that we can help um, help walk you through, then uh, we're more than happy to, to point you in the right direction. For sure. And I have my chat open now, so you can uh, send your questions there and I'll see them. Um, but yeah, good question. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to be showing you a bunch of stuff today and we realize that it may be overwhelming um, and it may seem like a lot. We're just going to we're going to show you a, a tour of my house, really. And it, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, it's packed wall to wall. If I could get more in, uh, I will. Um, and I'm saying this just to keep in mind that the education and the installation process is part of the service that we provide. So if you see all the devices and go, I'm never going to get that, don't worry. Uh, we're here to you know teach you and ensure that things are working well for you. That's part of the service. So you don't have to be on your own. We're here for you and uh, we will support you as we you know, go through this, uh, your technological journey together. <laughs> um, another key facet of the way we approach things is um, realizing that you are a unique individual and um, you are more than your disability. Um, so what works for one person with a spinal cord injury does not necessarily work for somebody else with a spinal cord injury. Um, Ian and I, we have the same condition, um, but what works for Ian does not necessarily work for me. Um, so we look at you as a person and you tell us what you want to achieve. And uh, we look at, you know, the best ways that you can achieve uh, that. Um, so we, we really try to work with you as an individual. So as uh, Taylor mentioned, some of this can be a bit overwhelming. And so it, this slide is just to 
to represent how easy it can be. It, it can literally be pushing a button to turn the TV on and have Netflix start. And then from there, we can keep building upon it, uh, depending on your, your requests or your requirements. For those that use eye tracking software, uh, I'll let you know that we don't provide the hardware itself at, that you see in front of us here. But uh, if you do have the equipment already set up, then we're more than happy to integrate your smart home within your existing eye tracking hardware. And for Taylor and I, I think that we primarily use voice control nowadays. And, uh, and there are a number of different ones. Uh, here on the left is the Google Nest Mini. And then on the right is a Amazon Alexa uh, Echo Dot. And they're, they work very, very similar. Um, but they, they both have their pros and cons. Uh, for example, I find that Google understands me better, um, but uh, I think Taylor is the opposite. I think he prefers the Amazon ecosystem. That's true. Uh, Google and I don't get along lately. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. But just to show, just to show, you know, there's a difference between the assistant sometimes. So if you're finding that you've got a Google device and it's not really understanding your speech, maybe you should try an Alexa and see how that goes for you. It's just worth a try. Okay, so today we're going to be showing you uh, some video from our We Talk Tech series. Uh, our We Talk Tech series is a great place to continue learning about technology if uh, you enjoyed today's presentation. Uh, Ian and our coworker slash boss, Wayne, uh, put on a show uh, usually around once a month where we invite one of our uh, members uh, or a community member to come and talk about how they're using technology to uh, be more independent and uh, what the technology is doing for them and, uh, you know, um, share their uh, insights. And uh, usually um, they've always got great things to say. So they're always, they're always fun. Uh, the other program that we put on is uh, very similar in that we still talk about technology, um, but it's geared more towards seniors and um, technology which can aid them in uh, uh, preventing social isolation, uh, maintaining uh, independence in their home, and uh, you know generally maintaining or improving their quality of life. Uh, this is a program that we put on thanks to the New Horizons for Seniors grant from the federal government. And we put out um, I think several videos now and uh, as well as several presentations. Uh, all geared towards the uh, older adults in our uh, community. And now we're gonna show you um, some, uh, a short video. Are you muted, Taylor? I, 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 I muted myself. I meant to, I meant to stop sharing. That's what I meant to do. Okay, so give me one sec and I'm gonna load up a video here. Uh, which we're going to share. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to go through the video and we're going to be pausing and Ian and I will be talking about kind of what's going on here to provide some more um, context to what you're seeing. Yeah, we wanted to switch things up a little bit because uh, in the past for these SEI uh, presentations, we've gone through uh, uh, what a smart Plug is with a light bulb, but I think it's really important to actually see it in somebody's home. And what better of an example than Taylor's house? For sure. Hold on just one sec. I am almost ready. I just want to pull out and welcome Gordon. I recognize you. We've seen each other before. Welcome to the show. We're just going to go through um, uh, my house tour. You joined right, right at the great. You've joined at the right time. Apologies. All right. So. Um, and I, I don't think we have any sound here, and that's on we purpose. Do not. Correct. Yes, that's okay. on purpose. So I've cut all the chit chat out of the, the regular. Uh, you know, it's regularly got some uh, interview style uh, questions over top of it, but uh, we're just going to be going through it, and Ian and I will be uh, talking about uh, what we are seeing here. Uh, so this is my house and 
these are one of the, I think the, the most important, well, they're all important. This is a device I really love. These are smart light bulbs. Uh, these are my Philips Hue smart light bulbs. Although there is many brands of smart light bulbs available now, um, their operation is very simple. Uh, they turn off and on, which we can see. If we just go back a little bit, you can see it's coming to life here. So this is my office. We've got many, many of these around my house. Uh, I think most of the areas that I would be in, uh, so you know, the kitchen, bathroom, my office, bedroom, they've all got smart lights or smart light switches. And what that means is I can control them using my voice or a, um, an app on my phone. Uh, so I can turn them off and on at, uh, at my convenience. Uh, these uh, light bulbs, they pair very nicely with uh, motion sensors. So uh, this is a motion sensor, which is, you can probably guess just a little bit uh, to the left of the lamp. And whenever it detects motion, it turns those lights on. So in my office, I don't have to ever tell Alexa to turn on my lights. I can just go in the room and the lights come on. So it's very, very convenient. I've got these motion sensors all over my house and uh, I, I couldn't do it without them. I would be furious if somebody took them away overnight. <laughs> and I think it's important that uh, all of the smart lights that we provide are dimmable as well. And that I love, uh, I'm a, a little bit of a night owl. And so I don't want the lights to be at 100% all the time. So we can program it for certain times of day to have a certain intensity and even a, a different warmth to go from like a, a, a warm to cool, I think is what they say. So that's really important to me. For sure. So that that's a, you know, a really great example is if you require a nighttime intervention with a, a care aid, um, like being rolled or um, I'm not sure what else would, would require any, a nighttime intervention, but if you, you know, need somebody to be in your room and they need to have a, a some light at nighttime, or maybe maybe you're just getting up to go to the bathroom, uh, motion sensors can be great because they can uh, uh, sit, turn the lights on to a specific brightness depending on the time. So if it's 2 a.m., you don't want 100% brightness. Like Ian said, uh, you want, you know, maybe 5%. And that's something that we can set up um, with these motion sensors and something I've done in my bedroom. Uh, it's very, very nice. And I never have to worry about somebody accidentally leaving a light on throughout the night. If, if it doesn't detect motion for, let's say, five or 10 minutes, then it turns off. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so jumping to a bit of a different, uh, uh, a different kind of uh, area of technology, uh, here is my television. And what I'm highlighting here is a little black box, which is kind of hard to make out. Can you guys see my cursor? Can you see that, Ian? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so right here where my cursor is, we can see a little black box, and this is a Fire TV Cube. And in my opinion, this is the best device for members who primarily use streaming services. So if you're watching Netflix or Amazon Prime, oh, apologies, go back a little bit. Um, this is a really great device, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later. I've got some, uh, I think, some shots showing its unique features. <clears throat> Uh, so a key part of uh, my smart home and Ian's smart home and many of our members' smart homes are the voice assistants. Uh, so these are your, your Googles and your Alexas and your um, theories. Um, these are the two. Okay, I only have one on my desk. This is just for illustrative purposes. I'm not that, <laughs> sure. that weird. Um, actually, I do have two on my desk right now, but only one is plugged in. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so these are uh, the voice assistants. So you can ask them to do, uh, you know, whatever you want with your smart home, uh, turn the lights on, um, adjust the heat, open the window coverings, you know, whatever you want. Um, these are great. These are called Echo Show, and they have a screen built in, as you can see, and they can show you uh, all kinds of information, or they can look at YouTube, um, or you can see I've got my calendar here. Uh, with a very cryptic uh, event title. I have no idea what that means, uh, which is super helpful, of course. Um, so th these are uh, really great. Here, we're just showing my work setup. You know, there's um, some interesting devices. Anything I should uh, key in on here, Ian, and explain, or what do you uh, think? 
I think that uh, in the center at the bottom there, you have your iPad. I do. And that's huge. I, as somebody who has been a, a diehard Android PC fan for most of my life, I've uh, recently switched over uh, some of my devices to Apple. And I have to say that voice access, uh, complete hands-free, Thank you, thank you. That's for Android. See, I, I know it's still in my blood. Yeah, voice control for for iPads and iPhones is absolutely incredible. I I think that they have done an outstanding job, and um, I think you use it quite a bit, don't you, Taylor? I do. I I I really love my iPad. I, maybe that makes me an Apple shill. I'm not quite sure, um, but I really like using my iPad for the accessibility features built into it. Um, so during the day, when it's at my desk like that, I use a trackball mouse. Um, but if I'm in bed, you know, lying comfortably on my side, and I don't want to be messing with the mouse, I need a break. Um, I can control the iPad entirely with uh, uh, my voice, um, and I, you know, regularly use it for multiple hours every night. Um, which we we won't get into my sleeping habits, but uh, I, it does work quite successfully. Um, with some caveats, like it does need to be a quiet space. Um, you're not gonna have much success with voice control in a crowded mall, for example. But if you're just in your bedroom trying to watch some TV or browse the news, um, voice control is excellent. I also love that you have Home Assistant running, which is something that we don't provide for our members, but if anybody is uh, wanting to take their smart home to the next level, then feel free to reach out to us and we can give you some pointers on how to use Home Assistant and, and how robust of a system it is. Ian, can you just take over and chat a little bit about the Fire TV Cube and the voice control aspects of it? I'll be right back. Yeah, of course. All right, so the... Um, Fire TV Cube, made by Amazon, and it's pretty amazing. It, the voice control functionality is really, really impressive, and it also has a built-in infrared uh, blaster, so it can send a, a signal to your, your TV, your soundbar, etc., uh, to really control the entire uh, entertainment system just with that one advice, uh, advice, sorry, device, I mean. And um, one of the really, really cool things is that you can actually navigate by voice using the Fire TV Cube. So let's say you're in Netflix or, or Amazon Prime, you can actually say, go down, uh, left, right, select, back. Uh, you can also ask for a specific program and it will open that for you. So I think this is uh, some, not really cutting edge, but something really, really important that I hope uh, the next generation of uh, smart home devices, I, I hope they take this into consideration because there are a lot of TV services that don't have this functionality. And it can be frustrating if uh, you can't physically pick up a TV remote um, that you can turn the TV on, but you can't scroll through the TV guide. So that's where the Fire TV gets uh, two thumbs up. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it is surprising that the Fire TV is the only device that has this feature, but uh, it's awesome. But if you're just watching streaming services, uh, it's got 100% recommendation for me. I use it all the time. Um, it's the only dis, uh, device I use for watching TV, and it's, it's, it's great. And something that uh, I want to clarify is <laughs> you, you read my mind, Jeff. I was just about to say this. So yeah, Fire TV and Fire TV Stick or the Fire Stick, they are very, very different. And Taylor, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Fire TV Stick does not have the same voice control as the Fire TV Cube, it, correct? It does not. Okay. Um, we can get into the nitty gritty of why, but uh, play, uh, to put it short, uh, the Fire TV Cube is the only one that has this voice control feature, uh, which allows you to browse and navigate using your voice. Uh, the Fire TV Stick has some voice control capabilities, 
but uh, not the navigating using your voice. Okay, what's next? Next wow. is some switch bots. So we're gonna see these in some other locations or one other location, but uh, this is a really great example of the use case for a switch bot. Uh, so switch bots are the cutest piece of technology that we offer. And I will fight anyone who says differently, um, especially you, Ian, I know I could win. Uh, yeah, so what I think they the do- finger bot, but that's for another day. <laughs> what they do is they press buttons. Uh, so here you can see uh, a switch bot on my computer that I'm using right now. And what it does is it presses the power button for me. So it, it deployed and pressed the power button, computer's on. So this is really great. This is part of a, a routine I use in the morning. Uh, so my computer turns on automatically every day uh, when I get up, which is, is, you know, it's really awesome. I don't have to think about it. It's all done for me. And I don't have to ask anybody else to do it for me either, which is, uh, you know, it's really important. Right, and you can play switch bots and finger bots absolutely everywhere. Like we, we keep finding out new solutions that people have come up with. Um, but it can be anything from a computer uh, to a hospital bed, to a coffee maker, uh, turning on the fireplace, like sticking this onto a, a light switch. Um, honestly, you, you name it. I think some people even have them connected to their, their wheelchair, which I haven't done yet, but I'm, I think that's the next step, Taylor. Yeah, well, we'll see another example here of, uh, uh, do you have a question, Gordon, about the switch bots? Uh, yeah, um, is this like programmed or is it, um, or is it voice activated? A great question. Uh, so you can program the uh, switch bots to activate at certain times, or you can use your voice. You can use an app on your phone. Um, if you're set up with eye tracking, you could use that. Um, so there's, there's lots of options for control methods. Does that answer How your question? How you program it? Um, through an app on your phone. There's like a switch bot app. I don't app. have a phone. Um, oh, okay. Um, Ian, how do we, do we work with members who um, don't have phones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So if you wanted to, let's say, use our voice control to activate it, then we could program it ahead of time and then uh, send it to you. So you wouldn't need uh, to use a phone at any point. Um, and they, they work through- Let me just tell you what, uh, what days we want it to turn on and, and what time to turn on mm -hmm. and off. Yeah, yeah, roughly, yeah. yeah we, can do, we can do that. And uh, for those techie people out there, they work off of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that can be helpful at times. Yeah. So if you wanted to take your switch bot out camping, you could. I don't know what you'll do with it, but uh, you certainly could. <laughs> I like it. Challenge accepted, Taylor. All right. All right. So we're switching Thank to you. Uh, a different room. You are welcome. Uh, this is now my, we're into my bedroom here. Uh, and this is a, another example of, of a way that we can control lights. Uh, so in my office, you saw I had smart light bulbs. In my bedroom, I have smart switches. Um, why? Just, just because <laughs> it's just the route that I've gone, but uh, you know, we've got options. It, it varies on, you know, your light fixtures and uh, whether or not you're a renter and um, it varies, but um, smart switches are an option, and what that does is it replaces your uh, regular light switch with um, a smart light switch, and then you can issue uh, the same command you could issue to a light bulb. You turn it off on um, dim and bright um, and all, the, all that good stuff. Uh, you could also program it on schedules, and uh, as you can see here, there is a, a little motion sensor tucked away in the corner, and whenever this is triggered, whenever somebody comes in my room, the lights come on. Uh, so I, I actually have a mix of light bulbs and smart switches in this room now that I think about it. So I've got uh, two smart light bulbs here and a lamp and uh, one in a, a pot light upstairs or up in the ceiling, uh, which is, uh, you know, they work great. So this one in my ceiling is actually uh, white and color. Um, so at nighttime, this one comes on and, uh, you know, at a very low brightness in a red color. So that it's not really like aggressive lighting when you're trying to stay asleep. Um, so that, that's really nice. Um, I'm not quite sure if 
Um, we offer colored options yet. I should, we should have put a disclaimer at the beginning. Many, many of these devices are um, ones that I've personally purchased um, through my own money. Uh, we, but we do often offer, if not the same device, uh, something kind of equivalent. Um, so um, like we don't offer the Philips Hue uh, light bulbs. We do um, actually. They're, they're, oh, we do. Excellent. Yeah, wow. not, I don't think we do color just yet. There, there would have to be a, a really important reason. Like if somebody uh, needed right. it as a, a trigger to, to understand, if somebody was mm -hmm. at the door, it would turn the color, then, then maybe, but more, right. more often than not, it's just a, a dimming uh, right. bulb. But usually the dimming, you know, I did have a, just a dim light in there uh, before that came on at 1% during the evening, which was, uh, you know, quite sufficient. Um, I'm just you know, a bit of a, a fancy pants, as Ian would probably say. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's what we've, that's what I've ended up with up there. Um, and, so here's another, yes. Oh, I just wanted to say before you jump away, mm -hmm. uh, you briefly mentioned the light switch as opposed to a smart mm -hmm. light bulb and some of the benefit of that is that if you have a, a lot of people that are in your your home or sharing your space then um most people uh, it's just second nature to go over and flick a switch on the wall and so that's where our uh, smart switches really come into play right uh it's a bit of a it's a bit of a story to get into why but um to put it simply, if a light switch is turned off, there's no power going to it. Um, the light switch, the light, a smart light bulb will stop functioning. Uh, all you need to do is turn the, the switch back on to get it, you know, working again. It's not a big deal, but it can be. It is frustrating. Uh, I know Ian and I both have been through that. So that's why, um, if you're sharing your space with somebody who's using light switches, um, it's the light switch, uh, the smart switches are a great option to get both the best of both worlds yeah and if you have a whole bunch of light bulbs in the same room let's say your right. living room has 10 ceiling lights 10 pot lights then a, a yeah. smart switch would be a much better method than replacing every single light bulb yeah or you know even a situation like this one here this has three light bulbs these are just regular light bulbs controlled mm -hmm. by one single switch so that was more cost efficient um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, so here we are with some more switch bots and this is a very cool, um, use case for them that I stole from Ian. Well, not stole. We love to share these ideas because, you know, that's what it's all about and showing everybody's got, um, you know, all this cool stuff. Uh, so what this does, this is, uh, I should have given a wider shot for some context, but. This is uh, my air mattress, the control panel for my air mattress. And what these switch bots are doing is they are pressing the buttons for me. So when I'm in bed, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, I'm not getting up to go press these buttons. That's not how that works. Um, so these are going to press these buttons for me. So when I issue a command uh, such as mattress, it's going to press these buttons in a certain order and it's going to make my mattress nice and firm for transfers in and out of my bed. Uh, so we're going to see them uh, poke out here, boop. So it pokes this button, which is going to enable this control panel. And then it's going to press this button, which enables, um, oh, we're just jumping all over the place here. Let's go back a little bit. Um, so it presses the, the secondary button with this arrow, which makes the mattress firm. So I can do this for transferring out of bed or um, for comfort. Um, and there's, you know, there's no reason, you know, over here, there's some more buttons. Um, there's no limit to the, well, I'm sure there's a limit, but I'm, I haven't reached it yet of uh, how many switch bots you could stick to one thing. But this really just shows the, you know, the flexibility. Um, these are, we're, we're, we've just shown you two examples today, but um, you probably got something in your life that you're thinking of right now that you could stick one of these things onto. Um, they're really, really versatile in what they can do. As long as they've got, you know, like maybe a, you know, one or two centimeters to stick onto you, they're awesome. Anything to add about SwitchBots, Ian, or should we move on? Uh, no, no, I think that's great. Right. Okay, so we're gonna see the SwitchBots do their thing again, and we're gonna move on. 
Oh, did I pause it? I paused it. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So uh, no, you can't have a 3D printer from us. Uh, this is my own. Um, but what <laughs> I'm showing you here is uh, use of plugs. I have my 3D printer plugged into a smart plug, which we will see in a moment. And what that does is it um, cuts or supplies the power to it. Here it is, here's the smart plug. This is a TP-Link smart plug. We provide these and they have, uh, just like the SwitchBot, a near infinite number of uses. Um, I plugged mine into my 3D printer as you just saw, so I can issue commands to uh, turn on 3D printer, turn off 3D printer, uh, and it, it does. It, it's very simple and you can plug you know, any kind of device into it. Well, not, there's some restrictions, you know, super high energy devices, like a, you're not plugging your dryer into it, that's silly. Um, but fans or um, lamps are great examples. Mm -hmm. um, anything you can think of, Ian? Um, my bedside humidifier, my wheelchair charger. Uh, I, have a, I have a lamp beside well, I was me. Say like, a lava lamp, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Honestly, you can... Yeah, they're they're great. Yeah, I, I think you buy a three pack, or, or we we provide you with a three pack, and and uh, more often than not, we receive a phone call saying, "Hey, I just thought of some other places that that mm -hmm. these would be perfect." So mm -hmm. yeah, and we you know we provide these to our members, but uh, if for some reason you're not able to get onto the program, or you want to tell a family member about it, they're not extremely expensive you know you could get a two or a three pack for i don't want to say how much because I, I don't know exactly how much but um they're not extremely expensive and their 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 versatility is is really impressive and there's you know whatever device you've got around that you want to power and then turn off sometimes they're great um, and so we're gonna yep all right just want to step back to the 3d printer i think that uh, it's important to to know that um, Taylor and uh, one of our biomeds, Daniel, they're absolute geniuses when it comes to designing and fabricating using 3D printers. So uh, this is something that we uh, really pride ourselves on is that if we can't get it to work and there isn't another solution out there, then we can 3D print brackets and, and holders and such. Uh -huh. For sure. Um, so we're, we're looking at the 3D printer again, and I just wanted to uh, illustrate a way that we can make um, you know, smart technology kind of work together and be uh, greater than they are alone. Um, so we have actually two smart plugs working here. We've got one with this lamp and one with the printer, and they are synced. So whenever the printer turns on, so does the lamp, which is, is great. So you can see what's going on. Uh, and then vice versa. If the printer turns off, lamp turns off. Um, so there's some there's some interesting ways in which you can make the technology work together. That's where it really gets fun, uh, is finding how we can mesh these and make them uh, connect. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to move on to the from the printer at any moment here. I promise. All right, we're moving on. Oh, window covering. All right, so we're still in my bedroom here and, and the shades and they are automated. Um, so we don't have the exact style of uh, uh, window shade opener here, but we do have a very, very similar option um, that may almost certainly be better than what I purchased on my own, uh, <laughs> but we, we don't need to go into that right now. Um, so these are roller shade drivers and uh, I'll go, I'll cover what, how these work, but the ones we offer are very similar. And we also offer some other styles for um, different control methods. So if your uh, window coverings maybe have like a, a wand or a cord, uh, we, we probably have options for those as well, as well as um, curtains. Um, so the way these work uh, is you uh, stick your, your chain into um, a, a wheel with some teeth and it pulls the chain for you. So so it's just rotating, rotating, and it's going to pull the window op open. So it's really, oh, I jumped ahead here a little bit. Um, let's go back and watch it again. Um, so I've actually got two shades on this window. Um, again, more of the fancy pants that uh, Ian is uh, always making fun of me for. 
Um, but there's good reason. There's good reason behind it, I promise. Um, but uh, this is, uh, you know, window coverings are really important. Uh, it can't be understated how nice to have natural light is. Um, being able to open up your shades in the morning is, is awesome. So um, the reason I have two is because this window is, is the front of the house and this is my bedroom. So I don't want people peeping in there. Um, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but I don't know, one of these days. Um, so uh, in the morning, whenever my alarm goes off, uh, the blackout portion of this window covering opens up so that I get some nice filtered light in, but still maintain my privacy, which is really nice. Um, I have a very similar setup in my office, um, which is not pictured here because I just got it working, uh, which is kind of uh, going back to, I think the devices we offer are better. Uh, these ones were honestly quite frustrating, but uh, that's, uh, that's on me and uh, not the devices we offer for sure. I think they're, they're a much better solution for our members. Um, so yeah, these are, these are really great. And again, complete voice control um, and also some mild scheduling. Or mild scheduling, what a way, strange way to put it. They're scheduled to close at sunset is, is the way a human would put that. Um, and that's the case for many of my window coverings around the house is they close at sunset. Um, I just moved into this house and I didn't have window coverings for about the first two months. So um, I don't know my neighbors, but I know that they know exactly what I look like because they can see into my room. Uh, so um, yeah, they're, I'm glad they're there now and they're working pretty good. Anything to say about the window coverings, Ian? Only that I was so surprised as somebody who's never been able to open and close a, a curtain or a blind on my own before, how, how much of a, a life changer it is. Like even something as simple as hearing a, a noise outside and being able to open it momentarily and then close it afterwards. It's just great. It adds another level of independence that I never had before this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's incredible. I wouldn't, I would not dispose of these. I wouldn't dispose of anything at any of these smart devices, but uh, they're, they're incredible. Uh, so Ian, I'm just looking at our time. We've got about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to quit talking as much and we're going to get through these devices. Um, okay. Rapid fire so, here. Uh, these are uh, Amazon Echo devices. And I've got these all over my home in addition to the Echo shows you saw in my office. And these are just voice assistants. Um, we would typically supply you with uh, one to two of these. Um, again, I personally purchased uh, many more, um, but they um, they're great so that I can have voice control all, all over the house. Um, so this one pictured here is in my kitchen. Uh, we're also going to see one in my bedroom. Here's one in my bedroom. Um, and they're great. They work really nice. They sound good. And here's a, a lower cost alternative which that's a bit more compact. Uh, this is an Echo Flex. Uh, it's just smaller, a little bit um, you know, weaker speaker system, but still uh, it gets the job done. I have one of these in my bathroom and my laundry room, which are kind of low traffic areas. And they, uh, you know, they serve if you're just looking for a cheap uh, voice assistant, uh, you know, you know, a disused room that you may, may need to, you know, occasionally turn on a light with. So yeah, this is the laundry room. Here's one in the bathroom. And I'm very happy to say it survived the bathroom humidity for uh, six months now, which is impressive. Uh, this is, again, not a device that we offer, but uh, interesting nevertheless. Uh, this is a, my, um, a robot vacuum cleaner, and this keeps my house pretty clean. I've got two big dogs, which you'll see later, and oh my goodness, there's hair everywhere. Um, so this cleans um, my house on a schedule um, every night. Oh, there they are. It comes in and it cleans the whole floor. It's really, it's really nice. Um, I still do need, do need a assistance to... Um, empty the container on it and um, do some light maintenance, you know, every couple of weeks, maybe every month or so. Um, but it's really nice for keeping the house clean. Um, any comments on the robot vacuum, Ian? No, I'm jealous. That's my next purchase. <laughs> it's uh, really excellent. I, I, I love it. Um, it's been a great device. All right, here's some, you know, an example of the motion activated light. So here I am. Uh, coming into my uh, laundry room, 
and you can't see it, but tucked in here, there's a little motion sensor. It turns on these lights with the smart switch, super convenient. Um, so uh, moving on, uh, another device that we don't offer, but you know, maybe of interest to some people is a water sensor. And what these do is if there is uh, water detected around the bottom of them, they're gonna set off a little alert um, or whatever you've configured to them to do. So I've set them up to um, send out a like alarm on my Alexas because my family has had uh, a lot of water leak damage. Uh, not our fault, water leak damage, just like bad, you know, uh, luck and environmental issues. Um, so I've got like 70 of these around the house now because I'm super paranoid about it. Um, but they're, they're nice. They're a nice peace of mind uh, so that uh, you can alert or you can react quickly to um, something before it gets out of hand. Yeah, I have one beside my bedside ventilator that my ventilator, yeah, the bed, sorry, bedside humidifier that the ventilator is connected to. So if I have a, uh, a humidifier leak, then it immediately notifies everybody. So they, they are good. And something I, I should mention is that even if it's a, a device that we don't provide to our members, we're more than happy to set it up for you if you purchase it. So when we're there setting up the equipment that we bring, we, we can do all of the extras. How come this wasn't offered to me, Ian? I've had a real time, real hard time here. <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware. Okay, well, I was. Uh, I just like <laughs> to suffer with this technology. It's fun. It's part of the process. Um, but again, we'll help you with it. You don't need to suffer. You can just enjoy it. Uh, I see Patty said, good around aquariums. Very true. That would be, that, that would terrify me just having this big bucket of water. I imagine they don't break often, but uh, good idea, Patty, for sure. Uh, so here's you know, the, the front of my house. And I just wanted to illustrate that uh, the smart switches can work for outside the lights as well. Um, this is a light, these light bulbs are attached to a smart switch in my laundry room. And uh, these lights are on a schedule. So they'll come on with sunset, which should be uh, any moment here in BC, uh, I don't know if anybody's from out of province, but any moment they'll be coming on outside my house and they'll turn off uh, at a later time when I can be reasonably assured nobody's going to be out there tripping or anything. Um, so they're really nice. On. Ta -da. All right, here is something you may have spotted in the previous image. Uh, this is a smart doorbell. Um, we don't offer this exact one, but we do offer um, some very equivalent um, smart doorbells, which will work quite well. Um, and this allows me to um, both see and speak with whoever is at the door, as well as receive notifications when uh, somebody's there. So if somebody presses the doorbell, I will get a notification on my phone, and then I can either just look at it and see, or I can uh, you know, speak with them and say, leave the package there, or I'll be right there, which is, is really convenient because uh, as a person with a disability, it takes a lot for me to uh, get up and going uh, sometimes. So it's good to say, you know, I'll be there in a minute. And I mean, in a minute, I'll be there. Uh, it'll take me a while, but I'll, I'll get there. So these are, these are a great addition to the system. Hey Taylor, I just noticed that we have about nine or 10 minutes left. So <laughs> is there anything else in this video that you think uh, we, we should touch upon that we haven't yet, um, aside from your dogs having fun outside. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, uh, how about we just watch the rest of the video and I'll, I'll uh, we gotta get through this. Yeah, I recognize uh, the time. So this is, uh, we're watching this from a security camera. These are again, not something we offer, but something I've installed and I like them for just the peace of mind and knowing what's going on around the house. Um, they're really nice. You can see my dogs playing here. Um, Smart locks. Smart locks are important to talk about. Yes. We do offer these for sure, 100%. Uh, smart locks will allow you to unlock and lock the door um, using your control method of choice. Uh, these pair really nicely with a uh, smart doorbell. So you can uh, both look and then let somebody in. Um, so say you've got a carriage coming at five o'clock and you want to verify it's actually them before you unlock the door. Uh, you can use your smart doorbell to look and, uh, and then um, open the lock if it's them, which is really nice. You can also set um, like access schedules. So I have carriers who start really early in the morning and I can schedule it so that they can unlock the door themselves and then 
Um, I don't need to issue them keys or anything. Uh, Patty, I see your question and I will answer it after we're done here, okay? Um, so these are another uh, window covering option. I have, uh, this is my front door. Uh, more traditionally, we would see these in windows. Uh, these are called switchbot curtains and they're, they're really cool. They basically fit onto your existing curtain system and they move it for you. Um, so they can either work uh, in single units or mine is in pairs. Um, it really depends on how heavy your curtains are, or how wide the opening is. Um, so again, these can be scheduled, voice control, all that, um, which is, is really nice. You can see here, oh, we're done. Here are my dogs. They're an important <laughs> part of the process. They had to be in the video. I didn't cut them. Um, but that is the show. Um, so and to answer Patty's question, would that work for property gates uh, as in the doorbell? Um, yeah, if, it was if there's a, like a battery. Powered, yeah, okay. and good Wi Fi. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, okay. it depends how far away from your Wi Fi it is. Um, and if if there's a doorbell there already, it would have power, I assume. So, um, possibly, quite possibly. I don't, there's no reason I, I don't think immediately that it wouldn't work. Um, possibly. There um, is power um, up by the gate. So, mm -hmm. um, but Wi-Fi, no, I don't think so. Yeah, that, that would be the, the part that would be uh, the issue then, because it does need Wi-Fi to connect back to um, uh, all the systems. Um, so that would that would be the issue. Um, Although I think it goes to a control box that is plugged in to a phone outlet. I forget what the, the hmm. box, what the box is called, but I'm not quite sure if that would work. Uh, you would need to, um, if you if this is something that you know is going to boost your independence, please reach out to us and we'll we'll um, we'll work with you one on one to see um, what we can figure out. There, there's probably a solution, but I, I just can't think of it right now. Okay. Um, thank you. Yep. No problem. Does anybody else have any more questions? I have a bunch of questions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but I'll let everybody else go if they do. <laughs> I don't um, see anybody else. Okay, well, I'll just like go on. So um, it for your program, I'm sorry if I missed this before, but is it means tested or do you have to own your own house? Like you could be living in a community care setting or renting or co-op house, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, generally, well, for our TIL program, there's no means testing. Um, the eligibility cr criteria is really as simple as we outlined. Uh, 19 plus uh, physical disability live in BC. Um, renters or uh, owning the home uh, is either is no problem. Uh, with renter being a renter, you just need to be aware that uh, to make any modifications like installing smart light switches or um, you know or anything those. that you would doorbells, anything yeah. that would like require modifying the house that couldn't be like taken down in a minute or two, um, you would probably, it would be wise to seek uh, approval first. Um, the only thing that would be um, means tested would be our door opener program, which is a separate application you would need to submit uh, if you wanted an automatic door opener. Um, but if you were below a certain income threshold, uh, it would be no cost. Um, but if you were above an income threshold, there, there may be a, uh, you may be asked to pay a, a portion or, um, yeah. Okay, and did, for, did I answer everything? I think one, one more thing is for uh, care homes or facilities. Oh, yeah. So uh, it really depends on the care home. Some of them are responsible for providing their, their own technology and that's something that, that we can uh, consult them on. Um, but as long as, it is considered your home. It's where you live and you're going to be there for a, for a significant period of time. And then we, we can possibly help with um, providing our services. For sure. Thanks. And if you went through your program, but for example, um, you want, you wanted 
I don't know, a different model of something, would you uh, get, like, let's say the lights, for example, the LED light, they're LED lights, right? The Philips. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted the color changing ones, would there, would you just pay the difference or you would just end up paying the whole amount if you wanted colored, colored ones? I think you would purchase it. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you would purchase it outright uh, yourself. Like you would do it with your, your personal funds and then uh, we would be happy to help you with the installation and the setup of it. Okay, great. Um, another question, uh, two more questions. So w the motion sensor lights that turn on, um, mm -hmm. do you program those to turn off at a certain time or um, how do they turn off? Um, so there's lots of settings uh, in in their various apps and, and configurations. Um, so mine are configured to turn off after like four minutes, um, but you could also disable that. You could set it for much longer. Um, it, it's very configurable to your preferences. Cool. And then my last question was about the uh, curtain opening thing. Yep. Would, do you think that would work for a bathroom curtain, like a shower curtain? I, I, think, I think it would work. I would, I would be concerned about humidity again. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I, especially like right in the shower. Mm -hmm. I, I would be very concerned about humidity actually. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's the same idea. Um, but I have not tested it. And I, I think I heard Ian say he hasn't either. And I have not heard of anybody doing that, but I will I try so. it because that's part of my job. And if that's I break it, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Break's the most frustrating for thing for me is getting in the shower and not getting my, I don't know, well, I have such a small little wheel in shower, but yeah. Yeah, it, it might work if you position them on the outside of the curtain. That would be, yeah. well, that would be no brainer, I guess. You'd have to do that for sure. Otherwise they would get soaked, um, but they... Yeah, we'll let Ian test and uh, we'll get back to you on the longevity of that. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that was all good. Thank you guys so much. I am recording this for those who joined uh, late. Yeah, thanks, Marnie. Everything is Everything possible. is possible. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm like, I want that. I want that. I want that. <laughs> but I guess it all adds up after a while. Like, it's great that we could start with you guys. But if you want your whole house done up, such as you do, Taylor, I guess it's a, quite an investment that you end up having to make, right? Yeah, I, I guess that's something we probably should have said again at the beginning is uh, we don't do whole house setups. We typically focus on where you're spending most of your time. So this is usually a bedroom and then uh, another space that you, you hang out in, an office, a living room, kitchen. Um, I've spent mm, a lot of my own personal fortune <laughs> my very tiny well it's gone now it's gone now it's all smart home tech um uh, yeah so uh it, it does that can be a lot um but you also get a lot out of it and many of these systems if you are willing to put enough time and frustration into them they can work really magically together uh which yeah. is is uh i i can't put a price tag on that personally so which is why i've done this and would it be and, possible to like have a if you wanted to have a whole home and have it all work together w would you guys be able to consult with that to offer you know what mm -hmm. would work with which room to room absolutely yeah yeah we're yeah. we're quite uh like invested in the smart home ecosystems and so yeah we'd be more than happy to, to answer those questions and, and I should also mention that in my experience, Technology for Living uh, typically provides the, the lion's share of the equipment that our members are, are looking for. And then maybe over the next couple of years, uh, family members will, will purchase like, some more light bulbs and, and plugs. But, but I'd say like quite confidently that 
with our, our 700 plus members that, that we come in and, and really try to help out as much as we can. It, it's not just like here it is one light bulb, it's here is a giant box of smart home tech. And, uh, and then if you want to add to it later, you're more than happy. To. Yeah. You guys get, uh, our members get really awesome packages. Uh, whenever Ian so sends me something, it's it's never good. It's it's always a box of wires that I've got to deal with. It's a headache. Uh, but yeah, our members get you know this awesome care package of all the equipment that they're looking for. I see a question from Jeff. Um, uh, how do you redeploy after a nurse removes the packing tape on my switch? Um, could you maybe elaborate on that a little bit more, Jeff? I'm not quite sure. I'm understanding. I have. The technology but a nurse decided to turn the switch off even though i had taped it with packing tape on mm -hmm. but now they won't work okay did they uh, did they turn it on and off for a number of times yeah it's been off and on many times now with the light switch yeah okay well hey that's something that we can help uh, you with to reset thanks. it oh okay. yeah thanks yeah, I get uh, what you're saying now, Jeff. I get yeah. it now. Okay. Like you and, said, um, you left the packing tape on it. Hey, yeah. Maybe what we'll do is we uh, we can send you some uh, little magnetic covers that go over the light switch, and then we can write a note on there that says, like, oh, please see. do not touch. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll make a note, Jeff. Uh, see, Jeff said he's quite new and the acceptance wasn't all that hard. Yeah, we aim to have uh, our, our application is very simple. Uh, you can fill it out yourself. You don't need a doctor. You don't need an OT. Uh, just you do you. You tell us what you're all about and how we can help you. And we'll get right on it. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. It was thank you very great much. information. Um, really appreciate it. And if anybody didn't get the links in the chat, I am happy to send them out. We'll be posting this video on YouTube as well. So 